Welcome to this video on object oriented programming where we're going to look specifically at the concept of inheritance. What you'll learn is how to create a base or parent class and a child derived class and understand what inheritance is, how it's used and why it's important. We're actually going to create two classes, code them in Python demonstrating the implementation and the use of inheritance. And before we do that, I'm going to have a little bit about this chap over here. His name is Gregor Mendel, and he's a monk who lived very long ago and he studied sweet peas. And often he's known as the father of, of genetics. It's quite interesting that he was one of the people who studied the inheritance of traits in pea, pea, pea plants. So he noticed parent plants appear to be passing down traits, genetic traits, so to speak, to child plants. And obviously we see that happen in the real world. What have you inherited? Imagine if chess, the playing of chess, was an inherited trait. It might or might not be. Now maybe you inherited this from your father or mother. Having said that, you will have additional things that you bring to the table that is just unique to you. So for instance, you could have inherited things, we all do, but you will also have attributes that are completely unique to you. Inheritance is one of the key features of object-oriented programming. Incredibly important to understand, and once you do understand this, you have a, a huge degree of flexibility. You can reuse code, and you'll really understand how it all fits together. A definition is inheritance the, is the ability of a class. Um, you can create a new class to be created from an existing class by extending it, and that is your key programming word, if you like, extending it, and this is called inheritance. Now, examples of inheritance, you can have a player class, a super class, so to speak. Uh, a player class might have attributes such as name, movement, and all these additional classes will have many of the same traits that a player would have, but they'll have additional attributes and methods as well. But they could, in, in theory, inherit from the, the parent or the base player class. You can also have a fish class and then you can have individual fish which inherit from the base class. And again, the goldfish will have specific attributes but it can inherit from the fish class. And all fish, for instance, might have a method called swim. You can have a course. You have attributes such as the course name, course location perhaps, and then you could have subclasses, derived classes such as basic course, medium level course, advanced OOP course. And this is the example we're going to code. A bank account is a very classic one. And if you see here, you have the arrows pointing up. You need to find out the exact terminology or the convention used by your exam board or course provider. It could be arrows pointing up or arrows pointing down. So let's have a look at inheritance. By creating a course, so we can create a class called course and then have a child class which inherits from the parent class. Suppose we had a course that was a generic Python course. We had a contact website We can have a little method, which is going to be contact details. And here we actually use that attribute, so you can say contact us, simply go to, and then we could have self.contact website. So I'm calling on the attribute, which I've just declared. Now, this is where we show a bit of inheritance. We can have another class called OOP course, which is an advanced course for people who have done the basics in the medium, medium level course. Now what are we doing here? When we write course, when we're creating another course, what we're doing is we're saying that this course actually comes from this course, or derives is derived from. Now course is the base or parent class, 
And the OOP course is the child or derived class. This class inherits all the attributes and the methods of the class course. So in this class we can have our little def init function. We can have something specific to this course, such as the trainer. method now what we're doing here is calling on one of the attributes which is declared there similarly with self-trainer, but the key to actually demonstrate the inheritance is going to be when we create the objects. So I'm going to create course 1 and creating an instance that is course 1 of the OOP course as you can see there. So it's creating an object, it's another way of saying it, creating an object for the class OOP course. Now I'm going to use the object which is course 1 to call the methods of the differing classes that we've made. Now contact details is clearly in the parent class. It doesn't exist in this class. So if I call the program and don't forget the semicolon next time, you'll see that it says contact us, simply go to teachselfpython.com. Now you'll note that that is a method which is in the parent class and the fact that it is displaying proves that inheritance has in fact successfully occurred. Another thing we could do is just to prove that you could call methods in the child class as well. Let's do that. And it says this course is such and such run by such and such. So this demonstrates, this is a very simple demonstration of what inheritance is in Python. It's worth noting that this is single inheritance. There are different types of inheritance including multiple inheritance and multi-level inheritance, and that's what we're going to look at next. Why inheritance? Something become very obvious as you're doing more and more coding, but one of the main reasons is the reusability of code. So obviously you can have inheritance, which is used to correlate two or more two classes together, but one of the main things is you can have reusability. You can also override, in particular, classes you can override a method it does allow you that unique ability so in the next video we're going to be looking at the different types of inheritance and how they're used in programming